Hey, Shalom, I'm Israel. First off, I would like to say, call her Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Kadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Also, I would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. The document is pushing this word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four quarters of the earth for the few sisters that watch and sincerely believe. Shalom to you as well. Just back in the spirit with another lesson. Just exhortation for the body of uh, sincere believers to just, you know, constantly always examine your, 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 your mind and your thoughts just to make sure that we're to the best of our ability uh, being men of integrity and in all things to hopefully receive the mercy, uh, the tender mercies of David being, you know, parts of the, the body in the house of David. But the point being made in this particular uh, lesson is just to rule your spirit. Paul in the Romans the seventh chapter he referenced you know a constant battle between the spirit and the flesh, but through Yahweh Shah, you know we're not constantly judged for the sins that are some you know uh, punishable by death. You know Yahweh Shah's blood covers those things, but that's no excuse to willfully just go off against the heavenly Father and His Son. You know. We should be in the spirit and our bodies and our thought process and every aspect of our, our life. We should be offending less in things that, you know, separate us from the Heavenly Father. We should be trying to draw closer to the Lord. And brothers been pushing the whole uh, aspect and vibe and concept of fear, you know, which that's an important thing. You know, that's the beginning of wisdom. That's how we begin to get closer uh, acquainted with the, the Heavenly Father through his son. But Lord willing, I'm going to just read some precepts just going into ruling our spirit all in the battle against this flesh, man, because it is a war. You know, not only are we going to war with these other demonic forces, but you're going to war your spirit that is with your own flesh. But we always have to just be mindful of the victory, the victory that we have in Yahweh shot ultimately, and we should just. Uh, to the best of our ability, just dig deeper as the days draw nigh for the return of our Lord. But before I ramble on too much, I'm going to go ahead and hit the scripture. This is uh, Proverbs 25 and 28. It says, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So the times that we're coming into, we always go into Isaiah 33 and 6. Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times and strength of the salvation. So in order to not be a city that's broken down and without walls, you're going to have to first and foremost have to be able to rule your spirit. You have to check yourself. That 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. That's a constant examination process day for day because there's new you know, things being presented to our spirit, especially here in the course of Great Babylon. All manner of perversion and wickedness, you know, all different types of ideas that if we get too caught up in those thoughts, we could be separated from the Heavenly Father and our spirit to where we're not able to check our spirit. And that way we're giving heed to the flesh. That's the point being made. You know, every, you know, person or every brother, namely, knows their self better than anybody else can know except for the Heavenly Father. So... You have to know what alignments and adjustments you have to make to increase in the spirit, you know, that you'll be able to be a stable uh, piece of the foundation of the house that's being built, you know. But I'm going to go to another scripture because the beauty of Yahweh Shah's sacrifice is that we're able to receive mercy. We're able to repent. We're able to ask for forgiveness if we're sincere. The scripture says, godly sorrow worketh repentance. It says, uh, I'm going to read here in Galatians 5, and I'll start at the, the, at the first verse. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So, that's a mouthful. I'm going to try to break it down a little bit. But it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. And I wanted to go into that word, stand fast, in the Greek. It says, uh, it's the G. 
4739 Stako in the Greek. It says um, to stand firm, to persevere. And I had a coach that told me that perseverance starts when any task gets difficult. And pursuant to Matthew, the seventh chapter, following Yahweh Shah, that's the straight gate. That's, that's a position of difficulty that we're going to have to have his level or not his level, but we're going to have to get on our own levels of composure and just being able to rule our spirit in the times to come more so. It says, I'm going to continue to read these definitions. It says to stand firm, to persevere, to persist, to keep one standing. It says from the perfect sense or perfect tense of G2476 to be stationary. So that's key right there. I thought that's interesting. It says to be stationary. To be solid, pretty much. So, it all starts with ruling your spirit, you know, that you'll be able to stand fast or be found solid. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Yahweh Shah had made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So, through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice, through his blood, we do have liberty where we're not constantly or instantly judged going off and breaking the laws but I'll read this real quick it says matter of fact I'm gonna keep going and uh, I'm gonna get this actually this is a uh, st. John 8 and 32 it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so that's how we've been made free. That's how our mind and our spirit has been made free through this truth, learning this truth, you know. But there's requirements with understanding the truth. There's great responsibilities that come along with uh, knowing the truth. That's why King Solomon said, as you increase in uh, wisdom, your sorrows increase. But in order to get on a level of truth, it all st starts through that fear of the Heavenly Father, you know. And just being able to rule your spirit. But it's beautiful that we have liberty in Yahweh Shah. The truth does make our mind free. You know. It says, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So we don't want to be entangled with the affairs of this world. And the yoke of bondage. Because the yoke of bondage is sin. You know. Just because we've been given liberty and freedom. That's no excuse to just continue to just go off. And that's how it is going to illustrate it when you continue to read down throughout Galatians, the fifth chapter. But I'm going to jump down to the 13th verse. It says, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So just because we've been given freedom to understand this truth. To grow in the in the in the glory of Yahweh Shah through the work, through the ministry, through the sufferings and the uh, the, the the adversities associated with following Yahweh Shah. So we do have uh, liberty, but we're not supposed to use our liberty or our freedom for an occasion to serve the flesh. And love, that's how we serve one another, keeping the commandments. But just because we have this truth. We have freedom under Yahweh Shah's blood, liberty. The word has free course where brothers can teach. You know, uh, we have the ability to repent if there is an offense or if we do go off. But as the understanding is elevated to him, to whom much is given, much is required. So we're going to be held accountable. The brothers that understand this truth and know what's going on, you know. So we just got to do the best that we can to line up to receive mercy. This is uh, Sirach, God of the Apocrypha, chapter 15, verse 20. Matter of fact, I'm going to start up a little bit. Yep, I'll just start at Sirach 15 and 17. It says, before man is life and death, and whether him like it shall be given him. And that's the situation that we're coming to right now, man. Life and death is going to be on the line. You know, we know how this uh, this current world is about to end, you know, so we want to line up to receive salvation. We want to line up on the other side of that. We want to receive the mercy 
to be delivered, to receive salvation. And that's what the, the decision that's being made or that's being drawn in the spirit, you know, as brothers go out and preach and as more judgment, you know, starts to commence in the earth. It says, for the wisdom of the Lord is great and he is mighty in power and beholdeth all things. So the Lord, he beholds all things. He's omnipotent, all powerful. He's omniscient, meaning all knowing. Verse 19, it says, and his eyes are upon them that fear him and he knoweth every work of man. So the eyes of the heavenly father are upon those that fear him. His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, like he tells you in Sirach, I believe, the 23rd chapter. So he sees our ways. You know, that's why we have to, to the best of our ability, rehearse the righteous acts more better to the best of our ability, offend less, examine ourselves more, being able to rule our spirit as things get hotter, as being in the spirit more and more, that's what's going to uh, uh, reserve you uh, in the situations of life and death. It says, um, verse 20, you yeah, had a point I want to get in what I last read. It says, he hath commanded, he hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license or permission to sin. So just because we've been given uh, grace and liberty to serve the Lord and not, you know, have to suffer the judgment for breaking certain laws. That doesn't give us a license to willfully sin against the Heavenly Father. We still have to, to the best of our ability, you know, just get better and better. Resisting the flesh through the spirit. Being able to rule your own spirit first and foremost. Yahweh Shah, he was the perfect example of composure. Just keeping his integrity, you know, however the situation which he already knew what cup he was going to have to drink. And we know we're going to have to line up in the same sufferings, you know, as you have a shot. We understand that there are going to be some men that ain't going to taste death, but however the course may play out, you have to be a man of integrity and just really just rise to the occasion and have that level of composure in your measurement, of course, as you have a shot himself did. That's why the scripture says in Philippians, the second chapter, let this mind be in you that was also in Yahweh Shah. But I'm going to read this real quick. This is Colossians 3 and 1. It says, If ye then be risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above where Hamashiach sitteth on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. So we've been risen from this world. We're not to be entangled with the affairs of this world. Being free from this world, because that's the truth sets you free. We ain't on the playing field of this world. We're having our own uh, spiritual conversation through the gospel. You know, those that believe and can understand the doctrine, the name, you know, the legacy of, of this word. It says, so we're higher than these people, essentially, not just to brag or boast. It's all glory to Yahweh, why Yahweh shy. Verse two, it says, set your affection on things above and not on the earth. So you're supposed to set your affection you're supposed to set your best pure energy and craving towards the things that are uh, pertaining to the spirit and receiving salvation, mercy, and righteousness in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 3, it says, For ye are dead and your life is hid with Hamashiach and Yahweh Shah. So we're dead to this world. That's why we shouldn't get, you know, really caught up in the things within this flesh. Now, that's a lot of things that's advantageous to the flesh that you can get caught up in every brother has to measure his own spirit to know what you need to rule your spirit more in whether it's eating too much having a lazy demon on you needing to work out more needing to study more needing to pray more needing to read more whatever it is you know you we all have to examine our own situations and determine what's going to be beneficial in helping us you know receive mercy when the, when the son of the heavenly father returns, you know, just being mindful of the constant war that your, your flesh is trying to do to your spirit. But knowing that we have victory in Yahweh Shah, we're, we're having to be dead in this world, but we're going to rise to him, to the occasion with him when this world is being put to death. 
That's what we're hoping for making these sacrifices even in our bodies right now. Yeah, I'm going to read verse 4. Colossians 3 and 4. When Hamashiach, who is our life, shall appear. So Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, this is our whole life, man. Promoting this gospel. Being in the spirit of brotherly love. Serving the Lord, man. It says, so when Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So we're going to appear with the Lord in glory. He's going to receive his glory first, but we're going to be glorified as well, you know, for making our bodies a living sacrifice and standing so stiffly for the name of the only begotten son of the heavenly father, Yahweh Shah. Just overcoming this flesh through the spirit, just that daily process of ruling your spirit more and more, getting you closer to the Lord, getting you prepared for his coming. That's the spirit to the best of our ability that we should, you know, try to be in. Matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 5. It says, mortify, and mortify means to put to death. It says, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So these are all the different elements of the flesh. These are the things that the serf that the, the flesh chiefly serves. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, idolatry. All of these things lead to idolatry and just rebellion mode against the Heavenly Father. Ultimately, you know, they don't please the, the, the spirit. Ultimately, the things that are pleasing to the flesh, they don't please the spirit. And we're trying to be upgraded in the spirit because we understand divine intervention through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is the requirement for us being removed out of this situation, out of the peril of our overthrow. So it's beautiful that we do have the liberty and the, and the freedom to serve the Lord without our conscience being condemned when we do go off, but understand that there are requirements to our faith. There are expectations and we just can't be willy nilly. We have to be intentional in serving the Lord and understanding that we're supposed to be in the spirit of being upgraded. So, Lord willing, this made sense and edified, you know, the body. Uh, I want to give all praises to Yahweh. Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Kakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect.